So you've got a check engine light for a camshaft sensor. Let's tackle it. For many of you, this image right here will be everything you need if you've already changed out one of these sensors before. There's two common engines on the G35 and the 350Z, the non-rev up and the rev up engine, which you can tell by up front. If you look here, you have variable valve timing on both the intake and the exhaust. So this is a rev up. The non-rev up looks like this. The non-rev up has one camshaft sensor on each side. So bank one, which is the passenger side for a left-hand drive model, and then bank two, which is the driver side. But if you have the rev up engine, you're gonna have four sensors total. So you have two sensors on bank one and two sensors on bank two. But all I need to do is reference this image here for the check engine light I have, and then swap out that sensor. And there's two types of sensors. So there's an angled one and a straight one. So if you look at the image, you'll know which one goes where and which one pertains to which engine code. And if you have the funds and you plan on keeping the car, I'd recommend changing out all of the camshaft sensors when one goes bad. I've been doing mine one at a time for years, but it seems like every six to 12 months, I'm changing out one of these sensors. So it kind of makes sense to just do them all at once if you can. All of the sensors are on the back of the head for the camshaft. There is a crankshaft sensor also, but you have to access that from down below which there's plenty of videos on that one. It's just a single sensor to replace. The forums will always say to only use OEM sensors or else your car will literally explode. At least that's what it sounds like. I've been using the Duralast sensor from AutoZone for years for a couple of these and they've been holding up great. And plus with the Duralast ones, I think you get a lifetime warranty. So if it acts up again, you can just go swap in and get a new one. But this time they had it in stock and I feel like inspiring the next, whatever that means. Uh, so I got the Hitachi brand, but be careful. Warning, cancer. No description, just cancer in a box. My code is a P0345, so that's bank two, and that's the angled sensor back here. And I really didn't need to take the intake off, but it helped me get the light over there, which helped a little bit so I could see what I was doing. And obviously you wanna be working with a cool engine. All right, so we're going in behind the engine on the passenger side. You'll see the green sensor, which is the straight one. And then I will put an arrow on the angled one that we need to take out. So I'll probably work from this passenger side to get that one out. Unfortunately, I can't show much back here while I'm doing this, but a lot of this is by feel. There's a green tab that you push forward on the clip. And then there's a 10 millimeter bolt holding the sensor into the engine. So I can see when I put the new one in, it's gonna go in like this. And I know the connectors up top and the bolt is over here towards the driver's side. So that's where I'm trying to loosen. So just feel around to get the 10 millimeter started. This should be a good length of a 10 mil to get that bolt out. And remember how the sensor is positioned when you take it out. So that way when you put the new one in, you can put it in right and get the bolt started. To take the old one out, you can kind of twist and turn it once the bolt's out and then start pulling it outwards. Then you want to push the new sensor in until it pops and you can put a little oil on that rubber o-ring to help it slide in. I'm doing this mostly by feel, so with one hand I'm finding the spot, and then with the second hand I'm gonna hand the part over so I know exactly where it goes. And then to find where the bolt goes, I'm rotating the sensor a little bit while I'm holding the bolt and trying to hand thread it. Once it gets started, it should be pretty easy. I'll do it hand tight and then a little bit of torque with the wrench. Then we just clip the sensor back in, and you wanna make sure that green tab on the back is popped all the way out. So you just push the clip in, make sure you hear that nice click and the connector's secure, then you're all good. Then some of you may want to reset the ECU afterwards. So you have this overly complex procedure from Nissan that I'm going to do now. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but if you study it and then kind of memorize it, you can usually get it done within a couple tries.
Cool, the check engine light's gone. We did it. Now just keep driving the car normally and then see if the check engine light stays off. Hopefully it does and that does the trick. If not, maybe it's another camshaft sensor or another problem. And thanks to the forums for giving that awesome picture on describing which code goes to which sensor. But thanks for watching y'all. I'll leave some links in the descriptions for the forums that talk about some of these steps in more detail and have those images as well. So make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more awesome car content. Thanks again for watching. Bye y'all.